Greece is an amazing country that you have to visit at least once in your life, but there are a few considerations that you need to know before packing up and heading there. In this video, I'll give you a list of things to keep in mind, as well as an itinerary to help you plan your trip. First, let's start with travel tips. Greece is a big country with lots of islands and mountains, which means it's not very easy or fast to get around. So you'll need to plan out the islands you're trying to visit and the transportation to and from those places. There's a reason why Crete, Mykonos, and Santorini are the most popular islands, and that's partly because they're easier to get to from Athens. But keep in mind that travel in between the islands is a little more limited. Athens is the perfect hub to connect you to other places. Also, be mindful of when you visit. Several hotels, resorts, and restaurants are seasonal, especially in the touristy islands like Mykonos and Santorini. Workers usually go back home during the low season, which usually starts in late September or early October and lasts through the winter. I recommend visiting during May through June or anytime in September if you want smaller crowds and better hotels prices. Once you find out what islands you want to visit, I recommend booking flights and ferries immediately to make sure you get a great price and a seat. I found that getting around Greece is very different from most countries in Europe and that's mostly because of geography. You'll be taking a lot of ferries and planes to island hop so you won't be on many trains especially in the southern Mediterranean region. All right now let's talk about the places I visited. Let's start off with Crete. I have to mention that my experience in Crete was a lot different than the typical one and that's because it was raining three out of the four days that I was there. It was brutal, so I couldn't visit the beaches that I wanted to see, but I did make the most of it. The crazy thing is that it rarely rains in Crete, but of course it did when I was there. In Crete, I absolutely recommend renting a car to make it easier to get around. Public transportation is a little limiting, and calling a cab can be difficult, especially in popular areas. I stayed in Hania at the beautiful Domes in Hania. It was a great hotel and a perfect location. We had beach access, which was great since it was one of the two beaches that I got to see. They have an amazing pool right next to the bar, a great breakfast, which was included, incredible rooms. I'll link to it in the description and look out for my video on Domes in Hania. It's close to the historic old town, which was nice to walk around, especially at night. The lighthouse was beautiful. While in Hania, the weather was barely good enough for one beach day, so we were only able to visit El Afonisi Beach. This spot is really unique because when the tide goes out, you get to see some sandbars. It's really cool. Unfortunately, it was overcast and extremely windy, so we couldn't fully enjoy our beach day, but that's okay, I guess. We'll be back at some point to fully take advantage of it. The next day, our beach plans were canceled because of the pouring rain. Crete is the biggest island, and because of that, there are other things to do besides beach activities. We went to a vineyard to try some Cretan wines, and we did an olive oil tasting, which apparently is a thing you do in Crete. The olive oil was fantastic, though. Lastly, in Crete, you must have some raki. It's their local spirit, which is distilled from grape. It's delicious and they flavor it with all types of fruit. Definitely bring some of that home with you. After Crete, we traveled to Santorini via the ferry. Make sure you book your ferry in advance and get there on time because they don't play when it comes to schedules. We stayed in Santorini for three nights and let me tell you that it's absolutely worth the hype. Forget what you heard. I mean, Santorini is next level beautiful. It's one of those places that you visit and you think to yourself, is this real or is this some sort of set or something? The sunsets in Santorini are heavenly, romantic, and honestly humbling. Once you see it, you're immediately thankful to be there and to be able to experience that. So the only way to get around is either by renting an ATV, walking, or ordering a cab. I recommend the cab option. I don't recommend walking too much because there are a lot of hills, a lot of climbing. Every walk is basically a hike. So if you're cool with that, then fine, take a walk. I stayed at the exceptional Cabutagu Santorini. That spot is worth a trip to Santorini on its own. Honestly, it's the main reason why we came to Greece. The hotel is the perfect oasis with a ridiculous view of the bay and the perfect spot to watch the sunset. The rooms either come with a private jacuzzi or pool. 
We chose the pool option, which was absolutely the way to go and the most romantic place to see the sunset if you don't want to be in the mix with everyone else at the hotel's main pool. Yes, the nightly stay there is really pricey. I mean, Santorini in general is pricey, but if you can swing it, then I highly recommend it. Even if you're not staying at the hotel, I recommend booking a sunset dinner or drinks because that sunset is the best sunset I've seen my whole life. Don't get me wrong though, you don't have to be at a hotel or at a bar to watch the sunset. You can just pull over to the side of the road and watch an amazing sunset. But what's cool about this hotel is that they match the music with the atmosphere. So the uh, experience is a lot more augmented. It's, it's a really dope place to be and the vibes are just incredible. In Santorini, you could do a little hiking in addition to some sightseeing, but the most you do there is just chill at the pool or go to the beach and just wait for the sunset, honestly. I did a catamaran excursion, which was great. They take you around the island. You can snorkel and swim at different locations. It's a great time. They also barbecue right on the boat. After that, we went to Athens for a few nights before our flight back home. A lot of people say that Athens isn't worth staying in for more than a day or two and yeah, they're mostly right. <laughs> some parts of the city are a little dingy, but it absolutely has some great spots. We obviously visited the Pantheon and walked around a ton. Definitely check out Plaka. It's super pretty and picturesque. Set at a cafe, enjoy a beer, and just people watch. Well, that's all for now. I hope you found this video helpful. If it was, please hit the like and the subscribe button. And don't forget to check out my other Greece videos, and I'll catch you next time.